Hey, tell, tell your neighbor, first of all, don't get mad. Just don't get mad. Don't, don't get mad. Hey, we're going to, I'll tell you what we're going to do. There's no way uh, to stop what God's doing here. So I'm, I'm just going to pray um, for the offering, and then uh, I'm going to throw all my scripture together in the message. Uh, so after the offering, we're going to do the installation of my brother. Uh, Gary Harden is being the new interim president for the Travelers. Amen. So, so let's just uh, speaking on love, and that's what it's going to be about. So, uh, all the people who are um, working in our booth back there, I'm throwing them a curveball. So let's just pray for the offering, and then we'll bring uh, bring the Travelers and Brother Gary up with his wife. Uh, so, Lord, we just want to pray for the offering right now, and. Uh, that it's collected in love on this Valentine's Day. Um, it's uh, delivered in love and it's used in love to love your community. And uh, as the basket comes by, Lord God, let us uh, be reminded of, of how you've blessed our own personal households uh, in this church. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, let the basket come on by, applaud the Lord, and we will... Uh... So if my brother Gary and Linda's here, I want you to just come down here. And sit right here. Um, sit down here. So, come on down. All right, Gary and Linda Harden, everybody. Hallelujah. Thank you. All right, so, slide over just to your left, everybody. There you go. All right. So, I'm going to bring the travelers up here in a minute, but I just, I want to talk to you a little bit. Um, as we get ready to install Brother Gary and, uh, and, and been so gracious uh, to not only be part of the Travelers but be part of this church for a long time. I'm not going to go into everything Gary does because we'd, we'd be here forever. And his wife, they just do a great job. They love Jesus. I actually asked Gary to step in this role, and I don't know if he knew what he's getting into, but anyways, uh, I just told him, you know, and... and uh, I just told him, I said, can you, can you just come in and kind of hold the fort down until we can put all the pieces of the puzzle together and all that? I said, be an interim here for a while, and, and he said he would, so he's just a servant, and that's what him and his wife have always done. So just applaud him on his heart. Amen. <laughs> and, and let me say this. Just when you take a position like this, it doesn't mean you have all the answers and that your life is perfect. It just means you're raising your hand and you go, God... Um, I feel like I can, I can do this, and you're going to empower me. Uh, and I believe that this brother will do a great job and, and build on, on, on what our great leaders before uh, have, have done with the rest of the travelers. They're so, so wonderful. So uh, I just want to uh, pray for this installation. At this time, I'll ask for all the rest of the travelers that are patched in to come down here and just sit next to Gary or, or whatever it is. And I know it's going to be a collage of... You know, I'll be honest with you, when when I, I got to sit in on a board meeting and uh, and and I didn't really know how wonderful the, the ministry had grown. And uh, you guys squeeze on in here, everybody just kinda squeeze in there and we'll give we'll give you a, we'll give you a chance to, to show some love to them and I d I didn't really realize when when I got to go to this board meeting and then the girls sent me a list of all the people that were active in the travelers and all that. And they're just, it's a great group. And, uh, back when I started in this ministry, um, uh, we was riding and witnessing to people back in the nineties and it grew and we were going everywhere and here, there and everywhere. And we had some great leaders take it over and, and they've expounded on it and they've, they've built with the rest of the group and, and done a lot of great things. And, and we believe that there's going to be a lot of great things done from here. And, and I'm grateful for all the travelers. I love them guys. They do a lot of great things. So could you applaud this wonderful ministry here? So it's just a, a, a group of people who love the Lord, and they're using uh, what God has gifted them with to, to share that. And they, they really do a lot of great things. And and maybe you can talk to some of the people, and, and maybe that might be something the Lord's put on your heart that you'd like to be um, 
be part of. They, they do all kinds of stuff, and they witness, and they go down to a boys' town and witness to boys and girls that need help and all that. And, and when... Um, so, without further ado, before I, I pray over this brother and anoint him and his wife, I know we got... Um, I know we got a couple of gifts for them, but I'm going to ask Brother Gary to go ahead and read what it is the Lord's put on his heart. We're going to we're going to pray for him and his wife, and we're going to get back into the uh, to the service. And and again, everybody that's watching on live stream, I thank you guys uh, for for listening in. So, Brother Gary, go ahead. very, very humbled that God has uh, chose me to do this job Temp on a temporary basis, you know, he's got somebody else lined up in the, in the near future over the summer, that's, what, that's what's going to happen, but it's just, I just want to give God all the glory Thank for what you. he has already done in this ministry this ministry i've been riding with them for a bunch of years rode with cma for nine years before i became a traveler and uh, uh, pastor bevo and brad did a, a amazing job to bring this ministry to what it is today and it is growing like a weed Amen. and i'm excited about it so we're just gonna keep it going the devil maybe tried to to stop it for a minute, he's a loser, right? That's right. Amen. Amen. So what the Lord laid on my heart, he kind of woke me up a couple different times throughout the week and at night, and this one scripture just kept coming to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Read the whole thing. Take time. Take it at home and sit down and read chapter 12, 12 of 1 Corinthians. And it talks about the body of Christ. This ain't about one person. We are all the body of Christ. It yeah. takes many members to, to make a ministry happen and, 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 and be effective for God's glory, right? You guys are all part of the body of Christ. Each and every one of you have an individual, unique talent, gift that God wants to use or is using. So I, I'm excited to just be a part of the body. I got a heck of a team here that I'm going to, they're just showing love and support real, right now, and that's, that's awesome. Amen. I've got an awesome wife that is so supportive of all the crazy in my life. So anyway, that's about it, Pastor. <laughs> love you, man. All right, I'm going to ask uh, all, the, all the travelers if you just kind of lay hands on them from wherever you're sitting. We'll just connect. We're going to pray over him and his wife. And if I could get uh, the gifts that we're giving Gary and his wife to come down here, and uh, we're going to install him in this position. I'm going to anoint him with oil. I'm going to pray over him. If you guys that are here in the sanctuary and at home, just kind of extend your hand. And uh, I know we got those gifts somewhere. I'm not sure where they're at, but let's bring them down. You got them? Okay, yeah, we're going to give him that. So, Father God, we just pray right now for uh, my brother, Gary. I want to pray for Linda. And uh, as we lay hands on them, Lord God, we want to commission them out into the, uh, in, into the mission field. And, Lord God, as they use the gifts that you've given them, we thank you for that. Um, I thank you that this brother stepped in a role to, to help lead this wonderful ministry, this motorcycle ministry. And, Lord God, wherever you go, give them the words to say. Uh, in, in the people to hand out these Bibles to. And I pray for the whole Traveler's Ministry, each and every person, Lord God, knowing that you've, you've grown up a, a, a great, great ministry in this church. So we send them forth uh, in Jesus' name yes, and the Lord. Spirit of God. And all his people said amen. Amen. So let's applaud the Lord. <laughs> Brother Gary and Linda, we love you. Let's all stand up and give glory to the Lord. Thank you guys for being here today, Brother Gary. Take just a couple of minutes.
We can put on a little bumper music while everybody's coming by. If you guys want to come by and give this brother a hug and show him some love, that's fine. Go ahead. me as we get into the message today, would you please? Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the, the message of Jesus and his love to the world. We pray, Lord God, that we continue to, to put our trust in, in Jesus and share this beautiful message today with the lost and dying world. We pray all this in his name. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord an applause on Valentine's Day. You may be seated. Um, turn with me into 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We're going to go on. Um, so there's a lot of things that I'm, I wanted to do here, and we're just going to we're going to get the word out here and talk about uh, the true uh, biblical definition of love. It's a very important. And so you know, St. Valentine actually was a guy who, who, who witnessed to people in the Roman Empire in the 3rd century. I'll let you guys do a little homework on it. I'm not, I'm not going to dive into it right now just for time's sake. Uh, but Mr. Cope, I wanted to wish you happy 95th birthday, brother. I love you. Hey, you got a true war hero right here, Mr. Cope. A lot of heroes in this church, and and that brother right there has hauled a lot of water for this country. Amen. 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 If kids want somebody to look up to, you need to look up to somebody like that brother. Amen. And thank you. I, I could go on thanking everybody. You guys are all wonderful, and you guys all know what you've done. I love you guys, and, and thank you so much. Uh, love is patient, and love is kind. Thirteen four in First Corinthians. Um, love does not envy or boast. It's not arrogant or rude. Does not insist on its own way. Is not irritable, irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, and love never ends. Thank God for that. Amen. Christianity is the only religion in the world that's based on love. All the rest of them are based on works based and worshiping dead gods. That ought to bring you some comfort knowing that uh, Christianity is, is, is the true, true religion that uh, Jesus wants to follow uh, in, in the love of Jesus. Let's start talking about some of the things that the Bible says that love is. Uh, it's patient and kind. Um, and if you're married, you know you need to have patience. I mean, the girls do with the guys. It is not rude. It doesn't insist on its own way. Is not irritable or resentful and doesn't rejoice at wrongdoing. Love bear, and let me jump to seven. Bears all things and believes all things. 
Let me tell you this, guys. Sometimes people are hard to love. Just put your hands out like this, and you'll feel like I do. Amen. We're just, we're just God. Thank, just, just touch me. Just ask Him. Say, just touch me, so I can love people the way you do. Because I guess I can say this: most of us are from North County. <laughs> if we didn't have the love of Jesus in our heart, Mark, we'd probably end up slapping the mess out of some people. I mean, in the name of Jesus, we'd do it, but <laughs> do, do this with me. That ain't love. But I'm just saying some people. I mean, it's, it's talking about holding back, and it's talking about not doing wrongdoings. I'm talking about all that. So I'm just saying what's going on in your mind. Sometimes we would really like to express, let the flesh express itself. But the one you feed is the one that wins the battle. You either feed the flesh or feed the spirit, man. Uh, and I'll just be real honest with you. That's kind of, you know, when I kind of got involved in the travelers again a little bit and went to the board meeting and everything, I just, I really just, kept, Mike, I just kind of looked around and go, I, I need some guy that's going to love God and love his people. And if you'll start there, God will take you a long way. But if you have a hard time loving people, don't get in ministry. Because <laughs> human beings are your commodity. I'm just saying. Hallelujah. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, and love never ends. Thank God for that. And it's love that held Jesus to the cross, not nails. He could have came down at any time. Uh, so turn with me into John 13, and we'll get into the message. And don't forget about Valentine's Day. I wanted to ask you guys this, because most of you guys are my age. Whatever happened to the scratch and sniff Valentine's Day card? <laughs> I want mine to be like bacon. <laughs> I mean, I, I said that last night. Everybody's like, man, we, we want the scratch and sniff to come back. I don't know. I don't know maybe it caused cancer or something. I don't know what happened to it. But it was kind of fun to, I mean, do you remember? You scratched it and you sniffed it and, I don't know, maybe that's what's wrong with me. I, <laughs> and I'm th <laughs> I was preaching last night. And uh, so when we leave Saturday morning, we're usually going, we, we're like any grandparents, we're going to grandkids games. It's basketball season. We go from here to here to here to here, and then we go out to Moscow. And then, So my wife's packing. We pack a cooler full of uh, sandwiches and, and energy drinks and water and all kinds of stuff. She made BLT sandwiches before we left in the morning, like, you know, like 8, 9 o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, when are them for? <laughs> So I'm thinking about bacon all day long because they're in the cooler. And so about us, we got the bacon from them. I'm like, oh, man, I'm ready to just go off on this. Uh, so I'm thinking about when we're talking about greeting cards. I'm thinking about, man, wouldn't that be great if they had a scratch and sniff greeting card? Uh, anyways. So we ended up eating them all anyway, so. Uh, go to John 13, 3. So, talking about love and talking about Valentine's Day and greeting cards. And I was informed by somebody that Dollar General's got them a lot cheaper. They're like two bucks, as opposed to some of them that are five and six and seven dollars. So, uh, so I want to I want to warn you ahead of time. You're saying amen on this love thing, but as Jesus goes on in this message. At the end, he ratchets it up a little bit. We know the, the Leviticus, love our neighbor as ourselves. We know that. But at the end of this, Don, it really starts to get saucy. Amen? We'll find out if you really love people the way you said you did at the start of the, the sermon. Okay? Um, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come back from God was going 
was going back to God, rose from the supper, laid aside his outer garments and taken a towel, tied it around his waist. Jesus is getting ready to go to work. Jesus is getting ready to lay the example for me and you. So you know what this is? This is a Passover supper, and, and I kind of just dove in three. I thought it would be a good place to jump in. So he poured water into a basin, began to wash his disciples' feet and wiped, wiped them with the towel that was wrapped around him. And he came to Simon Peter who said, Lord, do you need to wash my feet? Question mark. Now we get, we're getting ready to see Peter's true character. And I told you he's a cross between ricochet rabbit and Jimmy Crack Corn, I guess. <laughs> I mean, this dude, Anthony, this dude's like everywhere. He's like, no, no. Let's see what he does here. And I kind of like hanging around a dude like Peter, he keeps it interesting. You know, you're like, man, this dude's about ready to pop off. So here he does it. Verse 7, Jesus answered, he says, What I am doing now you do not understand, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, If I do not wash, wash you, have, uh, you'll have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not just my feet, but my hands and my head too. So he changes from, well, I don't, you know, he's being real humble. Oh, you're going to wash my feet. And Jesus said, hey, you need to be baptized by me or you're not going to get into heaven. He's like, hey, what the heck, man, roll with it. Amen? It's kind of like being at the, it's kind of like being at the, uh, you remember going to Western Sizzling? Or go, it's like Golden Corral kind of thing. And, and they're cutting, and you, I'm just, I got to relate everything back to food. And you're walking up to it, you're kind of being like real humble, and they're like, you know, they got like steak there, and then they got the pork roast there, and then you got like the, and they're like, you, would you like another slice? And I'm like, <laughs> that's Peter. He said, hey, you know, the whole thing. I want, I want it all. And maybe that's you today. You, you're kind of holding God back, but let the love of God wash over you today at this service. Maybe, maybe you need to ask God to do this. Just, just, just wash me. Just, just blanket me with your love. Because once you've been touched by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, you'll, you'll learn how to love and learn how to do it good. Hallelujah. And not just in your marriage, but all relationships. And I told the church before, I said, if we could love the way Jesus loved, I could, we could fill up every building in town. There'd be a line outside wanting to get in church and going, I'm going to be there. That's a church that loves people just how they are, and they love people just like Jesus. So we need to take this message out and not only know it, but live it. Right, guy? Just get out there and live it. You know, sometimes it's the hardest thing to do is, is, is walk out this word. Amen? Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but my hands and head. And Jesus said to him, the one who is bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. So now we know he's talk, getting ready to talk about Judas Iscariot. He's talking about Judas Iscariot, and he, he came with his own free will, but he chose the devil, and he chose money. Sometimes people choose money over God. Look at your neighbor and say, don't do that, Jack. Verse 11, for he knew who was going to betray him. That was why he said, not all of you are clean. And he knows that in a room. But he loves you and he allows you free will. And you got to make the decision. No, I'm not going to follow the world's way. I'm going to follow the way of the Lord. He has said, me and my family on the narrow road. And we're going to follow him no matter who's following the Lord. Amen. Thanks for the golf clap. And I'm going to slide down about 12 and a half here. It says, do you not understand what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash another's feet. So I thought about this for a while. Should we have a foot washing party and all that kind of, like some of the churches do? I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but I thought about this. I go, if we're washing people's feet so people can see us washing feet, are we... Are we doing it so people can see us washing feet? Or are we doing it to glorify the Lord? And I've had people say that to me through the years. Oh, we need to do a foot washing party. I'm like, well, go ahead and do it then. I mean, it's kind of like somebody watching you work while you're mopping. I'll be at the church or mopping a little bit. Over. You guys understand what I'm talking about. And they're like, uh, 
Pastor, you missed a spot. <laughs> I'm like, here you go, show me where it is. <laughs> Amen? Amen? If you know where it's at, you, you do it, because you're probably better than me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I keep going? Yeah. Everybody's, everybody's good at giving advice. Yeah. And I'm good at it, too. I'm good at preaching this word. But walking it out is where the problem happens. Amen? So let's work on this together. Let's see how we do that. And it's got, it, 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 you know, as you put expectations on people, you really find out what their true character is. I mean, like when you're hiring somebody, anybody ever had to hire anybody like in a, in a hazing process? You hire them, you're like, if they start by going, Bertley, if they, if they come to you and they want to work for you, Dave, and they go, uh, when's my vacation and how long are the breaks? <laughs> Don't hire them. When you put expectations on people, they, they fold up like a lawn chair sometimes. And that's what Jesus is getting ready to do that, so be ready. Hallelujah. So remember, we're supposed to love our neighbors ourselves, and that's gonna, we're going to be, be kind of bringing that up in here, uh, Cherry, in a minute. So 15, he says, basically what Jesus is saying is he goes, I'm just saying, uh, Grindel, I'm just actually just kind of putting an example out there. You guys do this too. Or you do some form of humbling yourself and serving these people. Maybe it's not foot washing. Maybe it's, you know, whatever, you know, food ministry, whatever it is. Do some of this. Humble yourself. And then tell your neighbor to come off his high horse. And uh, I did it, so you do it. Uh, 16, let's go here. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you, you if you do them. So you know these things, now Jesus says do them. I'm not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but the scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate bread has lifted his heel against me. I am telling you this now before it takes place. So if you're reading King James, what it would say is you're going to know who it is by the man who dips his bread in the sop for you King James people. And then he finds out, everybody kind of finds out here eventually it's Judas Iscariot. Verse 21, after saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. And the disciples looked around and I'd be scared to like be at this dinner because, you know, if there's a humanness here, and you're kind of like, man, I don't. Know, I hope he don't lay the smack down on me. And we could all be sitting around there like at the deacon board, and all the pastors be around. Jesus is like, hey, one of you guys getting ready to betray me? I was like, oh my gosh. You know, I was a little gluttonous last night. <laughs> Amen. But that's not what he's talking about here. He said, he said, Judas Iscariot's uh, fate was already sealed. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. In verse 23, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved, we know this is John, was reclining at the table at Jesus' side, so he's kind of just leaning against him. And maybe that's what some of you guys need to do today to, to actually feel the love of Jesus manifest in your life is just lean on Jesus just a little bit. Just lean back on Jesus. So Simon Peter motioned to him and asked him, Jesus, of um, whom he was speaking. So that disciple, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? Verse 26, Jesus answered, It is he whom I will give the morsel of bread when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. And then after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. All of a sudden, he decides to deny Jesus one more time. How many times can you de deny Jesus before he, he takes you out of the family? I don't know. But I know today you got an opportunity to come to Christ. Now watch what happens here. I'm going to fast forward this. Go down to 30. Let's read it together so you understand what's going on here. One, two, three, go. So after receiving the morsel of bread... Immediately, after Satan entered him, he was standing in the, in the presence of holiness, and darkness has nothing to do with light. Come on, look at me now for a second. And sometimes you're that way when you show up at the family reunion. When you show up, sometimes they flee. 
because evil can't be in the presence of light. So when you're there and, and radiating the, the light of Jesus to a lost and dying world, some people will come and some will go away. And we need to pray for the lostness in society today. Amen? We haven't come to, we haven't come to uh, set them out. We come to set them free. Hallelujah. Man, that really spoke to me as I, I read verse 30. And you guys have all read this over and over again. But he said immediately when he decided to betray Jesus, Randy, he, he, he just took off. He goes, man, I can't be here anymore. He said, you guys are followers. Watch me. You guys are followers of Jesus. Jesus is here himself. I'm leaving. Talk back to me a little bit for a second. And you've been in that situation where you're witnessing to some people and you see this with street preachers. Some will migrate towards and some will act out and get real vulgar towards that preacher. Those are people who rejected Christ probably. And we need to pray for them. We need to pray for their souls. All right, now we're getting ready to get into this new commandment. So be ready. So remember, we know the one from Leviticus, love our neighbors ourselves, right? It says, when he had gone out, Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Listen to this, two verses. Little children, yet in a little while, while I am with you, you will seek me. And just as I said to the Jews, so now I also say to you, where I am going, you cannot go. Here it is, verse 34. Underline it, highlight it, and put an asterisk here. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I had loved you. Uh, okay, hold on. We're, we're going to try to get out of church without this going on us. Let's hurry up. Can you, can you speed this up a little bit? We, we know how. Stand up with me so we can kind of do this together. I want you to watch me here. Watch. Watch. Watch this. And we know that we know the Ten Commandments, and we, and we know we're supposed to love our neighbors, ourselves, and everything, and I can do that. I love my neighbors, myself, and because we think pretty highly of ourselves. So I'm supposed to love my neighbor the way I love myself. Now, some of you guys don't love yourselves, and you need to quit doing that. Quit beating up on yourself. God created you in his image. You're a wonderful creature. He loves you. You should love one another. We should fill these churches up uh, because I believe that God's draweth nigh here. I believe he's, I told you, I don't, I don't know if he's coming back during the Super Bowl, but I already got my marching orders. I have no idea. We could all be gathered back there in the gym today and I could be eating some ice cream or some chips. And God could, could, could order everybody's steps and he could call an account of you on this day. Nothing else needs to happen for him to come back. I don't know if I told you that or not, Don. He could come back at any moment. So I have to I make sure I get this part settled then we'll go back to the new commandment. It's a, it's a commandment of love. If you haven't accepted Jesus and his love, do that now. Okay, do that now, be, do that now before you leave the building. Um, so you need to do that. And, you, and your kids need to do that and your grandkids need to do that. Make sure that that's done. Trying, trying to figure out how to, how to express this to you. So listen to this. So here it comes. So here's the new commandment Jesus puts on his followers. I get, I'm in 34, 13, 34. Listen to it. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Oh, my gosh. Now, hold on for a second because... That means the person I really can't stand that's done me wrong. I need to love him the way Jesus does. Oh, hold on now. Hold on now. Hold, hold on. I thought I was supposed to love my neighbor as myself. I got that down. And he said, hey, man, he said, I, I, want, I want you to know how to do church under the new covenant. I want you to start loving cats. 
I want you to start loving people the way I love them. And I'll just give you an example. It just popped up in my head. So we had the travelers here and, and, and all that. I'll just tell you this. This is a good story. And it's a true one. We used to have church down at Cadillac Jacks down in the late 90s. And I, I would go up there and the place I used to drink at, now I was witnessing to. And we had our, we had our worship team there, and they had the, the jukebox there. They would play the jukebox loud, and my worship team, we'd just play louder. And, uh, and we had the, it, there was a spiritual battle going on there. In, in the bar that I used to go get drinks at, now I went up there to take prayer requests. Well, you didn't hear what I said. Whew. Man, it was, I'm telling you. The, the, the same tavern that I was drinking at, guy, and I'm not taking prayer requests. And I remember going up, taking prayer requests, and I went up to one particular guy. And he looked at me and he said, I'm not gonna, I can't say it in church. I'm just gonna be honest with you. And he he let me know what, what side of the road he stood on. I was like, you know, uh, I my flesh didn't care for it at all, but in the spirit, I know that he wasn't saved. And he said a few things to me, and and I I'm gonna be honest with you. Then I got back up there on the on the bandstand and I told the whole bar, I said, Do you know how I know? that the love of Jesus lives in my heart today is because I didn't just smack the mess out of that guy at the bar when I was taking prayer requests. And I said that to everybody. I'm just keeping it real with you. The love that God commands And he's not asking you guys to do that under your own power, Dr. Z. You won't have that kind of power. You won't have that kind of power to just, just turn the other cheek. See what the flesh wants to do, but doesn't get everything it wants. It wants to act out. But I had enough Jesus stuffed in me and enough mentors stuffed in me and their wisdom that I knew how to react when Satan sent one of his minions towards me. Because I used to make fun of Christians. I thought they was weak. I did. I made fun of them. I was, I was the Apostle Paul. So I'll be real honest with you. Being a Christian is, is, is the hardest thing I've ever done. It is. But to, be able to, to be able to walk the line, to be able to walk the narrow road, you've got to love God. And you've got to love His people. And don't just pick and choose who you love. That ain't love. They just send everybody that looks like me, God. <laughs> he goes, man, ain't nobody like you. The world couldn't take two more. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God, God made you unique and you all have a talent and you all have a gift. So here's my prayer to you on this Valentine's Day that you learn how to love not only your neighbors, yourself, but love people the way God loves people. And I'll be honest with you, in 2024, that's hard to do. So I'm going to pray for you. And, I, and I'll bet somebody today that you're reminiscing about how much you love the person that has gone in your life. Aren't you? Aren't you just right now? Can I see your hand if you are? I mean, I miss my dad. You guys miss your family. You love them. That's what, that's what, that's what the, it's not just an emotion. It's an actual feeling. It's a, it's the, the spirit of God is moved in your life. Oh, it's, it's thick and it's real, isn't it? It's a, it's a real feeling to miss somebody. 
And maybe that maybe they haven't even passed on, but maybe they're out of your life. And you're like, God, man, I'd love to have them back in my life. I'd love to have them back in my life. I like them guys. I like them people. Well, you know what? God loves them more than you do. He sent his son Jesus to die for them. So I'm going to pray for you. And maybe you walked in the sanctuary, a young person. And you've never accepted Christ as your Savior. You just stretch out your hand and you just say, Jesus, if you can save my soul and pour this love into me the way you've done to Pastor Pat and so many, ask Jesus to do that right where you're at. Just say, Jesus, I want you to pour into me. Yeah, I see your hand there, young lady. Praise Jesus. Ask him right where you're at. Just say, Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I see you, J.D. I see a young person back there with your hand raised too. And I want to be born again. I want to know your love. I want to know your love. I want to have somebody come by this young lady and just leave your hand raised right there, young lady. Just one young lady. One of you travelers, ladies, come on. Pray for this young lady over here. Somebody praying for J.D. back there and this young lady in the back back here. Just pray for her. Her hand's raised. She's ready to receive Jesus. Right there. You know how comforting it is to have somebody, and somebody right back there, Diane, right behind you. Right behind you. Straight back to that young lady. Doesn't it feel good when you have somebody in church praying with you? I bet you hope whenever your kids go to church that there'll be somebody that's got gray hair will lay hands on your children. Show them the love of Jesus. Just ask him right where you're at, dear friend. See, I want you to come into my life, Jesus. I want you to save me. I want you to save my soul. I want to be born again. I want the love of Jesus to, to radiate out of my, out of my mouth and my, in my existence and my activity. Now, Jesus, since you, I've invited you into my life, help me live for you. Help me read your Bible and come to church and pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then here's one for the saints. I want to learn how to love better. I think I got it down as a Christian, but I want to learn how to love better. I want to learn how to love better like Mr. and Mrs. Cope have, have loved people in this church and I want to be able to carry myself into my 95th birthday and love people who walk through these doors. Maybe some young person ought to go by there and, and ask Mr. Cope and Mrs. Cope, how many people have you seen get saved in this church? Go by there and ask them, say, is the, is the love of Jesus really real? Man, it's real. It's so real. You can tell those who love Jesus, can't you? People like Mr. Cope and Mrs. Cope and the seniors in our church, they just keep coming and they keep coming and they keep coming because this is what, this is what it's really all about. It's about a family. It's about, it's about love. It's about sharing this message to a lost and dying world. So right now I pray in the name of Jesus that God has his way with each and every one of you guys. We have the best Valentine's Day ever. In his name we pray.